Hi everyone, my name is Patricia Preston and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And I'm coming to you today with a fun fold card that can be used for a birthday, wedding, anniversary, or any fun occasion that you wanna give someone a cake in the form of a card instead of a real birthday cake. Um, so I wanna first give credit to a fellow demonstrator, He Jung Hunsbugger at hmadeboutique.com for this wonderful fun fold card. Um, I am going to just tweak it a little bit and bring you a chocolate version today. But first I'm going to show you the first version that I made. You can see um, this fun fold card here. And when you open it up, you can now see the cake. And it is a strawberry cake. Now I did, we're gonna be doing a little bit different one today, but this is the concept that we're gonna be using today. So let's go over the, a few of the products and measurements and we will work through this card together. So some of the products I'm gonna be using are coming from our mini catalog from January to June, 2021. And also our annual catalog that goes through May of 2021. There is one product in here that came from the celebration, but you can substitute that however you wish. All right, so let's get started. First, you're gonna need a few pieces of paper. You're gonna need an early espresso card base measuring 11 by four and a quarter, scored at five and a half inches. An early espresso to make the cake, another piece of paper measuring four by nine and a half inches, scored on the long side at two and one eighth, four and one eighth, and six and three eighths. And then two pieces of DSP paper of your choice, measuring four by five and a quarter inches. Now this paper can be used, um, you can use fruit, you can use flowers, however you wanna decorate your cake, just keep that in mind. All right. These are the two stamp sets that I'm going to be using today. One is from our celebration catalog and is unfortunately no longer available, but I know this was super popular, so I'm sure many of you have that. And I'm just going to be using uh, the wishing you the very best sentiment out of this um, set, so you can certainly substitute that. And the other one set I'm going to be using is from the mini catalog, Sweet Strawberry. It comes in a bundle with a punch, coordinating a punch. You don't necessarily need the punch for this card. And we're going to be using the strawberry elements, the stem, and happy birthday, you sweet thing. So that's what we're going to be using out of these sets today. All right, so let's start with our first card that we're going to do. We're going to start with our piece of cardstock, our card base at 11 by four and a quarter, scored at five and a half. So this is your typical tent fold card. And we're gonna just burnish this with a bone folder. And we're going to take our two pieces of DSP that we cut at four by five and a quarter inches each. And I'm going to um, show you here what I did on the original card is I used one side for the front of the card and then the opposite on the inside of the card. So you can do it as you wish. You can make them the same, you can keep them different, however you want to do this. So I'm going to make them different. So I'm going to use some Stamp and Seal Plus. This is my preferred uh, adhesive for this project. And you can um, use Tombow glue, however you would like to do that as well. And what's important when you adhere the paper down, you wanna make sure that if you have any directional paper, you wanna keep that in mind as you're adhering it. You also want to only adhere glue on the outside edges of your DSP. And I'll show you why in a minute, it will make sense. So for the outside, I want this bright red with the strawberry seeds. And to me, this is a directional piece of paper, so I wanna make sure that my seeds are facing up so that when my card is folded like this, it makes sense. So we're going to apply the adhesive on the four edges of this card. And simply line this up and adhere down. Now you're going to flip this over. So 
So your card looks like this. And we're going to adhere this piece. And I want the strawberries on the inside of the card. Again, you can make it however you want. If you want to keep the seeds on the inside too, you can do that. But I want the strawberries to show when this card is opened up. So I'm going to apply adhesive on this side. Again, on those four edges, close to the four edges. No adhesive in the middle. And I will explain. You'll see why in just a second. So make sure your paper is facing the right way. And we're gonna line this up and adhere down. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna need some die cuts. So what I've chosen are the layering circles die cuts and you only need one of those uh, circles and that is the largest plain circle out of the set. And you need a die cutting machine of your choice. And we're going to line this up. It will cut through the two pieces of DSP and the cardstock. You might have to run it back and forth once or twice. You're going to uh, line this up in the center of the card, nothing fancy. Run it through your die cut machine. And you will have a piece that looks like this with a hole in the center. And you will have three pieces of the circle that fell out that are not adhered together. Now, you're not going to need these two pieces of the DSP. They make great tags or additional embellishments on another card, so you can set those aside. What you do need is you need the early espresso piece that fell out um, that was sandwiched in between those. Now, of course, this doesn't look plain, but this is how you get this design. You're going to need an embossing folder called the Painted Texture 3D Embossing Folder. And this is so great because it looks like icing on a cake. And that's why I believe the original designer chose this because it looks like a frosted cake. Now you can choose any of the other embossing folders that you'd like, but I really think this makes um, a wow card. So I'm just going to take that circle that came out, put it in my embossing folder, run it through my um, embossing uh, machine. And now I have this circle and we're going to set this aside because we're gonna need this a little bit later. So we've got our card base and we've got this piece that we ran through the, the embossing machine. Now what we're gonna do is you're gonna need that early espresso card piece that measures four by nine and a half. And we're going to score it on the long side, meaning the nine and a half inch side, using your Stampin' Up! trimmer or a scoring uh, tool, whichever that you have. This card has a lot of pieces and parts to it. Um, I've already scored this piece to show you, but just for a refresher for those of you that are new, using a trimmer. You're going to put your arm out for this piece here. <clears throat> and six and three eighths is the edge of this little brown uh, segment here. So you're going to use your light colored stamping blade, which is the scoring blade, and you're gonna score six and three eighths, move it down to four and a quarter and score again. And then your last score is at two and one eighth inches. All right, so we're done with scoring. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this piece of paper, we're going to bring back our embossing folder, our painted texture embossing folder, and we're going to line this up. The two scored sections in the center we're going to line it up on each edge and you want the Stampin' Up! emblem uh, face up when you run it through the die cut machine and your paper. So we're going to run it through, normally you would run it through your die cut machine like this, the folder. However, your paper is a little too wide. So you're gonna turn it and run it through your die cut machine as such. When you do that, you're going to get a piece that looks like this. And you can see that texture here 
in those two center sections of what looks like ice chocolate icing on a cake. So we're gonna carefully burnish this. And the burnishing lines are a little bit off when you run it through the die cut. So I will warn you, um, and that's just because of how it runs through and how it lines up on the edge of that embossing folder. So don't need a heavy hand here for creasing. You're just going to crease this as such. It actually looks like this. So mountain fold, mountain fold, valley fold. So your piece of paper looks like this and it will make sense when we go to put it together. All right, so now we're going to bring back in our card base and we're gonna do some gluing. Now I'm going to use some um, Tombow multi-purpose adhesive glue for this just because it gives us a little bit of wiggle room. So we're going to open up our card and we are going to line up the top section, the smaller section of this additional cake piece. Up here, you're gonna center it from right to left like you would normally do, like the DSP is lined up here. And you are going to close it just to make sure that it will fold and it is in the right place. Now, how we glue this is you obviously um, don't wanna put glue on the whole section here, but we want to glue uh, because you're going to see this. So we want to glue the sides and down here and here. Now, if you want to take a pencil, you can certainly take a pencil and mark your circle here where you do not want adhesive to go. So it's totally up to you. I'm just going to eyeball it. I know that I have about mm, three quarters of an inch here through the center that I don't want So that's where I'm placing my glue. Again, I'm butting this edge here up against that, that crease in the main card and I'm centering from right to left this way, my card. Now all I'm going to do is close it and we're going to adhere that section <clears throat> to the top tent fold as such. I'm just gonna give it a second to dry All right, so you can see how that's going to pop up like this. Now, this part's really easy because now we've folded it like this. If you want a nicer crease, you can come in with your bone folder. All right, so we've got a piece like this. We're just gonna fold it down, fold this back. Now we're going to apply adhesive on this entire section so that when we close this card, it's nice and flat and evened up. And it's going to glue down to this piece here on the your bottom part of your card. I'm just gonna apply some adhesive. And I do like to get the edge, but not too much because I don't want the glue to squish out. And again, just giving that adhesive to dry. I like the Tombow glue on this uh, section because you do have some wiggle room with that glue. All right, so now you can see our card, our cake taking shape. Boy, it looks delicious. So as we close and open, we now have a 3D cake card. Okay, so now for the top part and the decorating. And as you can see here, I decorated this with some strawberries and some other fruit elements from that stamp set. However, I'm just going to use strawberries on this one. And then I'm going to use just strawberries on the inside of this card. 
So let me show you how I did this. We're gonna set this aside for just a second. Now, to get the strawberries to show nice and juicy, you can certainly take the easy route and just stamp your strawberries with plain ink and punch them out or fussy cut them if you don't have the punch. However, I, you can see here in the video, they're shiny and they look juicy. And I think that's what really makes the card pop. So here's how you do this. Now I've, I've done a lot of these ahead of time, but I do wanna show you how I did make these for those of you who have never done this technique before. And this is using some clear embossing powder and some inks. So I'm using Real Red and Poppy Parade ink. Again, I'm using this st Sweet Strawberry stamp set. I'm using the outline of the strawberry in Real Red and I'm using the inside of the strawberry with Poppy Parade. You're also going to need Versamark ink, which is a watermark stamp pad. Now this one's kind of dirty, but it doesn't matter. This one's a really old uh, Versamark ink, so that lasts forever. We're also going to need the stems of this stamp set. You only need one stem, so um, I will show you how to do that, but it's the same technique. And because they're photopolymer stamps, stamp set, it's uh, you get a lot nicer finish of your inked image when you have something soft underneath. So I use a Stampin' Matte. So I'm going to stamp my real red <clears throat> here. And we don't need the real red anymore. And the inside of the strawberry, I'm gonna use Poppy Parade. I'm going to line this up and we don't need poppy parade now you're going to need seven strawberries for this card I'm clean my stamp set second because we're going to need that inside image that we just used on poppy parade but we're going to come in with the versa mark I have a clean versa mark here. <clears throat> Stamp pad. Make sure your ink is dry. It only takes a couple seconds for that to dry. Then you're going to stamp, after you clean your stamp pad, you're going to stamp in the versa mark ink pad and stamp right over that image. Now we're going to use Stampin' Up Clear Stampin' Emboss Powder. This is what's gonna give it that juicy look. And by the way, you're also going to do the same technique that I just did using the stem stamp set. And for the outline, I used Garden Green. And for the inside um, filler, I used Granny Apple Green. And then you're going to use the Versamark in the filler stamp set again to stamp over top to get that image. Now, while that's a wet, I have a um, piece of paper that I always use when I use Stampin' Emboss powder so that it's easy um, to get back into the jar. So I have one creased. I'm just going to sprinkle this over And then the magic happens. So if you have your volume turned up, you might want to turn it down for just a couple seconds while I heat emboss the strawberry. You can see it's kind of dull, but watch. And 
just like that, you have a juicy strawberry and a juicy stem. Now, I've done a couple of stems here. Now, we do have the strawberry builder punch that coordinates with the sweet strawberry set, punches out the stem, the leaf, the strawberry, and a nice little flower. However, if you don't have this stamp set, you can fussy cut them. I choose to fussy cut these strawberries anyway, and I'll tell you why. So I left one here to show you uh, to feed into the punch. And when you punch it, you get a white border around the strawberry. And I didn't really care for the white border for this particular card. So that's why I chose to fussy cut. And it's only seven strawberries. I made, I did make quite a few of these cards, but they were really easy to fussy cut. Fussy cutting is not my favorite. So that's why I chose. So you can do it however you wish, using the punch with a little white border or fussy cutting to get rid of that white border. All right, so I need to uh, fussy cut this one out just a little bit more. And literally a few seconds and you are uh, rid of the white border. Just like that. Okay, so that's your strawberries. You're going to do the same thing with the stem. Again, you can use the punch if you want, but I didn't want so much of a white border, so I fussy cut that little stem. And you only need one of those stems. So now we're gonna do a little bit of stamping for our sentiments. Now, I chose to use the Stamparatus. You can certainly, um, depending on what color you're using, but I like the crumb cake paper because it reminds me of a cookie and I wanted something that looked like chocolate icing for the writing so I tried stamping this uh, just one time using a stamping block and stamping my sentiments however it wasn't deep and dark rich enough for me uh, so I decided to use the Stamparatus so that I could restamp and restamp until I got the desired deep dark early espresso sentiment. So I just placed these on my door here. Now I am going to be die cutting these with the Stitch So Sweetly set because this to me looks like a little shortbread uh, biscuit and so I needed this size and the second from the smallest and the third from the smallest to fit my sentiments. So you wanna make sure that when you're lining up your sentiments on your door or your blocks that you leave enough room to be able to die cut these sentiments out. So that's the reason for my quirky spacing here. So I'm just going to ink up my sentiments. And because these are photopolymer, again, I do have the pad underneath and my Stamparatus. And you can see to me, this was not dark enough. I really wanted this to look like chocolate piping on a card. So I'm just going to restamp until I get my desired darkness of that sentiment. And I'm just gonna do one more because I really want that to be a dark chocolate. Now, you can clean off your stamp set, leaving it here with a um, the, the Stampin' Chamois to just remove the early espresso ink. Then what you wanna do, if you really wanna kick this up a notch, is take bring in your Versamark watermark stamp pad, ink that up, stamp over top just like we did the strawberries, apply your clear stampin' emboss powder, heat emboss it, 
and it's going to look like a shiny piece of um, a, a shortbread cookie with shiny chocolate raised writing on it and it is beautiful so i won't take the time to do this in the video today but now that you know how to clear emboss over uh, any color ink that you like to get that effect now you'll know how to do it so i've gone ahead and i have die cut some of those pieces out using the stitch so sweetly run it through my die cut machine and this is what I have chosen for my sentiments. Now, I didn't, I did not clear emboss these two. Um, this was after the fact, after I thought about it. But uh, so this is just plain. But as you can see, if you were to add a clear embossing over these words, like I just showed you, it would look like chocolate writing and look delicious. All right, one more piece before we put our card together is a piece of gold foil and you're going to use that stitched so sweetly large rectangle you're going to run your gold metallic piece or uh silver or whatever color metallic that you have it, because it reminds me of the metallic platform that a cake sits on when you get it from a bakery and you're going to run it through your die cut machine and you're going to get your rectangle. But a lot of those platforms are textured when you get a cake. So I have decided to texturize my metallic piece with the Tasteful Textile 3D embossing folder just to give it a little bit of texture. There's all sorts of embossing folders that you can use. I like the scroll one from last year. Um, so you get to choose or you can leave it plain. So then I ran that through the embossing machine and then I took that large rectangle and I cut it down on each side to about three quarters of an inch. And that's really all you need. Um, but I did like this nice scalloped edge so that I actually have, um, so imagine this, not to confuse you, I had one big piece of foil that was embossed these are the outer corners here because I, I was making two cards. Um, split them down the middle three quarters of an inch to give you that border. And we only need one of those. Okay, so I think we are ready to put our card together. We're going to bring back our card. We're going to need that circle, that three inch circle that we embossed our foil pieces, our sentiment pieces, our seven strawberries, our stem. We're going to need <clears throat> our glue and we're going to need a stamp and dimensional or two. And one last thing that I like to add as I liked the addition of the ribbon. Now to me, you can place this however you like or you can omit it if you don't have ribbon that um, satisfies this card. But this is in the annual catalog. This is our petal pink organdy striped ribbon. To me, it looked like filling within a cake. So in between the layers of a cake, and I thought that this was perfect. It was a light petal pink that just showed, you know, um, filling in the cake. So you can use red ribbon for the strawberry card. Whatever you choose to do, you can tie it in a bow or simply have it plain um, around the card without the bow. Or you can omit it all together. So just some ideas, lots of how to make it simple or dress it up. So I have um, my ribbon here. Okay, so now let's put this together. First of all, what we're going to do is we're gonna close the card and we're going to take our circle that has been embossed and we're going to apply some glue, but we're only going to apply it to this bottom section of the circle. Do not put adhesive up here on this piece because let me show you 
because when we open it, we want it to open and you can see that this is not adhered to the top of the card. So make sure you don't put adhesive up here in this plain section. So you wanna get it to the top and around here. And we're going to set this circle right inside of where we cut it out. So no guessing, no aligning, just set it inside. Give it a good press. Give it a couple seconds to adhere really nicely. And we can see how that opens up. It doesn't get stuck, just opens up very nicely. All right, so we're gonna decorate the front and we are going to use the smaller sentiment. I chose happy birthday, you sweet thing. And before we adhere this down, we need to make sure, um, is, this is why we do it with the flap closed, is so that we can make sure that when we open the card, that sentiment doesn't get in the way. So if you were to open this card and you were to decorate it and put this at the bottom, then it would be hidden or it would get stuck on when you're opening the card. So I put it here as a guide. I'm not going to adhere it down yet. So I want these corners to be clear of the opening of this circle. You can see that here. Just a little bit of space here so it doesn't get caught on the card. Now I'm going to adhere. I need three strawberries for the front. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of glue and put it on this one strawberry and I'm gonna tuck it behind here. Remember, I haven't adhered it down. And again, you wanna make sure that your strawberries stay within this circle and don't overlap to the DSP. Otherwise, it's going to inhibit your card from being open properly. So one strawberry down going to bring this back over just to line it up so I know what I'm looking for. I need the second strawberry with a little bit of glue. Kind of offset here like this and again still within that early espresso circle. Okay. Now we can add some dimensionals to the back. We're gonna pop this up. This card makes me want to eat dessert. I will, I will be honest. Now we're going to take our third strawberry and we are going to adhere our stem to the top with just a little dab of glue. Make sure you turn your strawberry the right side up and apply your stem. Now, the trick with this, not really a trick, is you wanna make sure that you place your dimensional at the top part of this strawberry and a little dab of glue on the bottom because this is already popped up this is not. So half of the strawberry is going to be off of that sentiment piece and half on. So we want to make sure that it's an even, even. So this is going to glue right to the sentiment and this is popped up behind it. So that is the front of our card. Cute, right? Okay, so now let's work on the cake, the strawberry shortcake piece. Now what we're gonna do is we have four strawberries left. This is really easy and goes super fast. Little bit of glue, but 
I only want glue on the bottom part of the strawberry because I want the strawberries to be sticking up on the cake, so make sure you don't put glue on the top. I'm gonna to start with one strawberry on the outer edge for alignment. So you can see how they stick up on the edge of the card, so make sure there's no glue on that top strawberry. Take another one, a little bit of glue about the bottom third of the strawberry, and I'm going to do the opposite and on the right side. All the way to the edge and eyeballing it up. And then I'm going to fill in with the last two strawberries. And you can eyeball this up, but they do overlap just a little bit. And I like, I like for them to be even at the top as well. And there is our strawberry cake. Now for the filling, I'm going to take the organdy petal pink ribbon you can simply tuck this if you don't want to do a bow or a, a knot on the side. And you can see how yummy that looks. It looks like the inside filling of a strawberry shortcake. Um, and then just tuck with some tear and tape the ribbon behind. Or you can do pull it through the back. and tie a little knot. And then trim this off pretty short. You don't want to add too much bulk in the middle of this. And what I do like to do with, um, if you're doing the knot, I like to take a glue dot and just secure that little knot down where I want it so that it does not slide. So I'm gonna move this down just a tad. That way you can slide it like this. And that's the filling for my card. Now I'm going to just regular glue the sentiment on the inside of the card. And again, I really think this looks like a, a shortbread cookie to go with this cake. Oh, wait, but first, sorry about that. Good thing that glue holds. I'm going to bring in my foil piece as my cake platter. I don't want to put that sentiment down and then have it not be aligned correctly. And I'm going to just butt this up against the fold of the card, of the cake, and glue that down. And now I'm ready for my sentiment. I also like using the crumb cake because it's hard to write a uh, message on the inside of the card. So this gives me a little bit of wiggle room to write their name and write who it's from. So that's why I also chose the crumb cake on the inside of the early espresso card. So there you have it. There is your fun fold chocolate strawberry shortcake card. Very simple to make. Just a lot of pieces and parts. So I hope you enjoyed my card today and thank you for joining this weekend and we will talk to you again soon.